Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Uh, today we're going to do block five of the 12 blocks we're doing for our sampler quilt. All these blocks are beginner friendly. And in the end, we're going to put together a lap quilt with 12 12 inch blocks and some sashing and a border and all that. So thank you for joining me. Today's block, we're going to need two five inch squares of a background, our background fabric, which is this Kona cotton uh, white that I had a layer cake of. And the fabrics I'm using for all these blocks are Buzzworthy by Canvas. And I have two layer cakes of that, but no yardage. So I'm, I'm making do with what I've got. Then you need one four and a half inch block that is fussy cut to, so it's something pretty because it's going to be in the center of our block. Then you need two five inch um, of a contrast, five inch squares of a contrast of some sort. And you need a 19 inch strip of, that's two and a half inches wide of both your background and your contrast fabric. However, since I'm working with layer cakes, I'm doing two 10 inch, and that will work out just fine on this one. So if you have the option of having it all one strip, uh, that's better. Less seams to sew and uh, more accuracy when you're cutting. Okay, the first thing we want to do today is make two half square triangles and I'm going to draw a line let me just move this to the side make sure I'm in where you can see me and I'm going to draw a line. This is an erasable pen, but it really doesn't matter because it's not going to show anyway. On either two of the background blocks or two of these contrast blocks. Then I'm going to take the background blocks. Put them right sides together. And I'm going to stitch a quarter inch down one side and a quarter inch up down the other side from this line. Now I would recommend that you do a scant quarter inch, which is slightly less than a quarter inch, especially when you're making half square triangles. Those are the ones I have the most trouble with coming out perfect. And if we do a scant uh, quarter inch, then, I mean, you can even do smaller than that. Then when we uh, cut them open and open them up, we can trim them to the right size. And I'm gonna do this on both blocks. I'm gonna chain them together, go down one side and then up the other side. Now there's, couple of things that will make a difference in the quality of your block when you're done. One is accurate cutting and one is accurate stitching. I'm sorry, flies come out in droves when I'm filming. And so you want to make sure that your quarter inch seam is really a quarter inch. So Test a, do a test run on some fabric and measure it to make sure you're a quarter inch or a scant quarter inch, which is slightly less than a quarter inch. But you, on the rest of it, you don't want it to be more than just a hair less. Uh, this, these blocks, it won't matter as much. And uh, using a ruler and a blade will give you much more accuracy for cutting blocks than a scissor will. I'm also going to use a leader, which is a piece of 
of scrap fabric that I start stitching on first before I start on my block. That gives it a running start and I don't have to back stitch. I don't have to worry about skip stitches at the beginning and I don't have to worry about a wad up on the back where it caught the, the threads. So I'm gonna use that every time I start a chain of, of blocks. Some people use an end or two and run off the edge. I don't most of the time. Uh, I don't find that as necessary, but uh, you certainly can. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew both sides. Now I want to cut my two blocks apart and then I'm going to cut right down this line I drew earlier and this doesn't have to be particularly accurate therefore uh, scissors is fine. Okay I want to iron towards the dark side. So I will put the light side down, actually this one isn't that dark, but it's darker than the background fabric. Be careful with this seam, you don't want to tug on it too much, it's a bias seam and it will stretch and it will stretch your block out of shape. Okay, now we want to trim these up to four and a half inch square. And I have a four and a half inch ruler, which a uh, square ruler, which makes it easier. But if you don't have a four and a half inch square and you have a bigger one, all of them have 45 degree lines that you can line, not all of them, but I, any quilting ruler will, you can line that up on your seam and then just you just have to pay attention to your measurements and compute where you need to cut. Uh, also, most rulers like this have a 45 degree line so you can line it up. Now with, since I have a perfect four and a half inch, all I have to do is put the two corners on my corner of my seam and center it and make sure that I don't, it's not short anywhere before I start cutting because I'll have to move it if it is. This is when a rotating cutting table would be real handy, but I have bought two of those and they both broke. So I'm not overly impressed with them. I mean like broke like the first time I used them. Now we have a perfect four and a half inch square. And the reason I have a little to trim off is because I did narrower seams. And I just know that I am not that good at, at doing perfect quarter inch seams. Maybe one day I'll master it. But, so I prefer to have a block I can trim down to the right size. I'm gonna to have to get a new cutting mat now. 
This one is um, an old one. I'm using my one I had out here. Uh, started buckling from getting too much steam on it. So I got out this one and it's got a lot of grooves in it from being used so much. So that's making my rotary cutters not working quite as well. Always cut away from yourself. Do not cut towards yourself. I have done that in some of my videos. And I'm ashamed to say that I know better. Sometimes I just think I'm invincible. piece looks like it was bigger than it needed to be. It probably was. I probably miscut it, but as long as I didn't miscut it smaller. those four blocks done. Now take your two strips, pretend this is all one long strip, although if you're working with a jelly roll, I mean a layer cake like I am, this works. And I'm going to put right sides together and stitch a scant quarter inch seam because I need to to make sure I don't get my blocks too small on both sides if you just have one strip it would be one long seam I'm gonna have two okay let's go to the sewing machine and do this I want to cut my blocks apart. Move my ironing board over here. And once again, I'm going to lay the light side down and press towards the darker side. White is very easy to see through and you don't want your seam allowances showing through. Now then, we want to cut this into four inch blocks. I mean, four and a half inch. First thing I'm going to do is level this up by putting one of these cross lines on my seam. And I have some extra on these so there's room to trim it up as much as I need to. Good on both blocks. And there's also extra if you're using one 19 inch piece. Okay, now I'll turn them this way. 
and I find I'm more accurate if I use this square ruler than I am with that ruler. So I'm going to use it. And I'm going to trim up the sides a little too while I'm at it. When I made this practice block, it was the best one I've done so far because I was able to trim up all of my blocks before we put them together. And we're going to end up with four blocks like this. Sorry, I hit the camera stand again. Okay, now we're ready to put our block together. What happened to my... Oh, no, I don't... <laughs> this is right. Okay, here's my center block. And I'm going to take these blocks and put them on all four sides of that. Then I'm going to take these blocks and stick them in the corner like this. And what we have is something that resembles a fancy picture frame with our um, fussy cut statement block in the middle. Now you can also use just the background fabric in the middle and then it will just look more like an empty picture frame. Uh, I've seen it done that way, but I wanted to put, I like to use as many fabrics as I can. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. We're going to do it like we've done all the others. We're going to do a quarter inch seam there, followed by a quarter inch seam here, not cutting my thread, chaining them followed by a quarter inch seam there. Then I'll open them back up and come back and get these other three to stitch to them. So let's go do that. Now that we have our rows all together, we need to flip it over and iron it. And I want to iron the center block away from the center block on the center row. And on these, I want to iron inside, I mean, towards the inside, because these half square triangles get kind of bulky when you try to iron them this way. Now we're going to go sew our rows together. We will take this and the little stitch is holding it together real close to where it needs to be. But we want to nest our seams so that one is pointing this way, one is this way, and the literal seam is on top of each other. Now you can feel it when, once you get used to it. If it's too far apart, you can just scoot it over till it kind of catches. They'll, they'll catch right there at the seam and you know that it's where it needs to be. So I'm not even gonna pin these this time since there's just the two seams. I can feel them, uh, but if you are more comfortable with pinning them, please do.
our block is sewn together. Let's get it ironed up and measure it. And I'm going to iron away from that block. No, I'm not. I'm going to iron these towards the block because of these half square triangles. Now then, let's see how good we did at getting a 12 and a half inch block. Oh yes, we're going to have almost exactly a 12, inch, a 12 and a half inch block. Okay, I want to fold this and find the center here by lining up these two seams. And then I'm just going to put a nice crease in it. Do the same thing. down here at the bottom and on each side and I'll iron these creases out later okay Let's lay it out and center this crease and this crease on a line and then this crease here on a line. Now, this should be a quarter inch over this line and it is almost exactly that. I'm gonna just trim off a sliver on parts of it. I'm going to flip it around. And this time I'm going to line it up on a line, but still line these center blocks up. And it should be a half inch over the line this time. Boy, this is the most perfect block I've done. There's only a little sliver right here. It's trimmed off. Now let's look at it in the other direction. Looks pretty much the same here. I'm not even sure anything's going to move my ruler. Just really just cut off a few threads. Oh, I'm going to line this up with the line and do it a half inch over. I'm going to have to put some grippers on the back of this ruler. It keeps moving on me. Okay, here's our final block. at it on here. Let's look at it on the gray side because of the white. Background. Now we'll add it to our other blocks that we've made this week. So they are all yellows and golds and blacks. And there 
is our quilt block so far. And if you watched the last video, you'll know that I've been making a sample block out of another colorway. So when it's all over with, I'm going to have two quilts. And this is the sample block I made of the other colorway. All right, thank you for joining me today. I uh, hope you'll tune in tomorrow as we do block six. That will be, we'll be halfway through with our blocks at that point. If you'd enjoyed this, would you please like, subscribe, share, um, anything you can is helpful for me and it helps me to bring more videos to you. And it helps me to afford a new cutting mat now that my others are, have given out. It's always something. All right. We will see you tomorrow. And remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord. Thank you.